meant for an adult audience. Love line may contain sexually oriented content. 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 Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Love line. Coast to coast. Hey, it is Loveline. I'm Dr. Drew. Adam Carolla is away in Las Vegas. Uh, is he coming up? He'll be coming up soon. He's uh, sitting at a control control room in Las Vegas trying to get an ISDN line set up. I'm here with the Barbie twins, Shane and Sia. Nice to meet you guys. Oh, pleasure nice being on They have a new book out called Dying to be Healthy, and it's really a quite an amazing book. Thank, Thank you. you. God, yeah. what an endorsement. Thank no, you. I, I'm serious. I, I, I wouldn't say it if I really didn't think so. And in this book is a very personal discussion about your own struggles with eating disorder, yes? Absolutely. Yeah. And sort of what I like about this is what's folded into it is a discussion about addiction and codependency and recovery. Right. Absolutely. And how those issues sort of go together. Because I deal with that all the time. All the time. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I run a, a large recovery program, and in there people often have eating disorders. Right. And I, I see, now you correct me if I'm wrong what your guys' feelings about this are, but more often than not, when somebody gets real focused on their recovery, the eating disorder symptoms subside very, very nicely. They need to focus on some issues pertaining to that also, but a 12-step recovery very often reduces the symptoms of eating disorders. Absolutely. I really do. I believe that it's a threefold disease. I really do. Like, it's a dry drunk if you uh, just, you know... Well, I think early on you learn that it's character defects and not that, that believe me, it's just a symptom. So it's just you a can symptom, just right. trade off the symptoms. You can transmit You can be the a disease. sexual ad- addict. You can be, oh, excuse me, we went off for a while. No, you're fine. You're okay. there. That's, we, just, you the, that's be, just the wonderful equipment oh, here at Westwood One. Uh, you could be a sexual addict. You could be a, you know, alcoholic. It's all the same thing. It's just a di- different symptom, but have the same character defects of control, being a victim. And all that lovely stuff. And your I think drug of choice is either food or the absence of it, bulimia. Now, you guys were very, very much uh, sort of public. Uh, your, your images were all over the world in the ni- early 90s, yes, mid-90s. Yeah. And at that same time, you were also suffering with all this. Yeah. Actually, it, um, I'm never going to blame. I'm going to take responsibility and not be a victim. We had never planned to, you know, be in Playboy or be a pinup or anything like that. I had always gone to school and wanted to venture that way. I believe that, I don't know which came first, but basically maybe our insecurity made us feel this need to have to do that Uh and made us feel, okay, we can validate ourselves if we're on the two covers of Playboy. You had mentioned victimization. Was was Dad one of the victimizers? No. Were there there males that were victimized? Do you think that was part of trying to gain some sort of... No, I do manner. believe our father was divorced from our mother, and I do notice, I do mention this in the book, that uh, girls that grow up in a family where the f- father is absent, they do have a tendency to try to validate validate themselves through men, either through modeling, uh-huh. stripping, yeah. centerfolds. So you had that need, you felt. Now, yeah. Well, he, he was a good father, though. I, I'm. It's just that as alcoholics yeah, go. Very <laughs> well. Yeah, he was a, a exactly. functional alcoholic. A functional alcoholic that did receive recovery. And your mom's in recovery now too. Absolutely. Yeah. And she must be a nice, important role model for you guys. Absolutely. She's very good. She's a therapist. Alcohol and drug alcohol. And what's interesting to me is that in the we we sometimes get you know a few people show up when we have guests in the studio, and tonight there was a crowd of people to get your autographs. So do you still get followed around? Is there still a big buzz yeah, where you guys go? It's so surprising and so flattering that especially guys after all these, you know, vomiting <laughs> stories. <laughs> stories that they still like us. God bless them because I thought <laughs> we lost in our there. commodity as a pinup. <laughs> um, I think it is. I'm going to pat ourselves on the back. Maybe, maybe you brave get... of us to talk about this because no one was out there. It's, it's in, in Hollywood to be a drug addict, an alcoholic, even, you know, to sleep around. But for a woman to have an eating disorder or weight problem, that's just, you know, you lose your you lose yourself as a commodity. If, if, you, if you admit that you have oh, a problem absolutely. that way. It's then you're gross. a pig and then you get rid of it. Absolutely. Now, you guys, are, you're, are your eating disorders active right now? Well, is you're never it's a, cured. It's a chronic thing. You're never yes. cured. It's a process. Or it's no, I say we have better. a lot of we have a lot of years of sobriety now. I mean, you guys yeah. look great. Is there? Is oh, there, thank you. No, is but there, it doesn't have to do with that. There is time. No, that, but I mean, what did you lose by? You know what I mean in terms of nothing, the commodity. The insanity. There, I notice the sky is blue now. That the whole lo- my There's whole life peace. is different. Yeah, there were times that you know we've been told to take Prozac, and I um, I. Uh, 
the highs and lows aren't there. It's more serene. Right. Which, Instead of hey, pros, uh, like I really worked oh, at. There's Adam. There's Adam. We hear you. Hey. I can hey there, Barbie him. twins. Watch oh, out. Hear me? Yo, we hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Hi, Adam. Hi. <laughs> my husband's a big fan of yours from the Mad uh, Show. <laughs> oh, well, thank him. I'm a big fan of yours from uh, from Playboy. Oh, well, thank, thank you. you. And, and the, oh, yes. And all the talk of vomiting hasn't shut you down, Adam? <laughs> No, really? no. Oh, he's kinky. <laughs> That's wonderful. I, you know, I got it all out of my system in the uh, late '80s. <laughs> I, uh, what, what year did that? Did, did well, you guys had a few pictorials, right? Yeah, we did two of them in the '90s. Oh, in the '90s? Yeah. In the yeah. 90s. Holy Christ! Where's the semen gone? <laughs> Yeah, that was great. You guys uh, on the beach there and rolling around and by the pool. Well, that was never great. Never. Not, not, yeah. to, not to take you off the frolicking, Adam, but they, they, yeah. really, they really have written a substantial book here. And, you know, I don't I don't really say that very often if somebody's oh just sort of talking. You know, I, I'm pretty critical about books. I know. Right. I listen to one, your show. This one is pretty substantial. I'm, well, I'm, I'm impressed. Know, and, I, and they wrote it without, uh, without – nobody – no technical Absolutely. Not even her. I yeah. mostly wrote the book. Well, don't give away your secrets that way. I mean, <laughs> no, what's funny, credit. though, is that I always, when I listen to you, I thought, wow, he really knows how to speak to, I think you do such a brilliant job on MTV to be hip enough, yet really know the language of 12-step without turning off people. I think you're doing a good job educating That's, both of you guys. Entertainment-wise well, you. and all that towards it's really and Adam, you make it funny. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> I I saw now. What what did you guys do? A E True Hollywood Story. We did, and it was yeah, funny because was we actually asked not to do it. You yeah. know, and they kept asking us, please, 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 because we're private. We're. I just didn't think we we contributed anything, and they kept saying for the book. You know, if you can say your life, and I thought, all right, if if we can do it. You know, without getting too much sensationalized, if we can do it where we can help other women, then that's part of our recovery, to yeah. give back what was given to us. Well, because it's now, difficult talking about it. Well, now how, like, we've talked to people who have done those or who have had them done to them, and sometimes people are satisfied with them, and sometimes people feel like they weren't portrayed. We're bulimic. Of course in a, we were satisfied. Great way. But do you feel, no, no, but do you feel that you were somehow portrayed inaccurately or no they or actually were very very kind yeah. but of course we didn't like the way we looked you know what's new <laughs> <laughs> the lighting that. was that, horrible that, that's gotta be but put a I caliban imagine, burka on us and we were fine i would think that that would make some other women angry you know adam that these women don't like how they look you know what i'm saying huge natural breasts on these two or at least uh if not natural they looked natural and that's all i we needed we are natural all we just natural. always saw that as a fat roll. Fat. Yeah, right. you never knew that we could oh, make a commodity. Oh. Two beautiful fat rolls right next to each other in the bra, <laughs> and some fat rolls in the back end too. Uh, you, but, you but know, that, really... that must be frustrating for them. That, that just really proves our point. I think something you and I. I think said. when you grow up, you don't like them. You do, especially if you have weight problems. So it was really bizarre for us that we could actually almost therapy to get your clothes off and because people that live that are dysfunctional always live in the future that they'll look better so you have to at that moment in time say okay like it or not this is it mm. and you have to come to terms and when you you know when you pose naked it's it's you know coming to terms with you living in that moment and that's really <laughs> difficult to do let me ask you guys a tough question because I, I was i think talking to drew about it but i can't remember um a lot of twins, I think, have this me and you against the world kind of syndrome. And you guys feel like you're looking out for each other and covering each other's backs. But do you think you would have been better off as separate people or as twins? Because it seems to me that sometimes twins create this sort of uh, false sense of us against the world. Well, Do you know what I'm talking about? It's almost dysfunctional to be a twin because right at birth you're codependent. And if you come from an alcoholic family... Um, That's we've a had, double decker. Yeah, it really is. Because you have... Well, we don't know how it is to be a singleton. Normal. <laughs> Absolutely. So right that away sucks. we're finishing each other's sentences. We're no. Just, um, you know, there's a Annoying. lot. Well, the main thing is when you're young, a child develops their own ego boundaries. A twin doesn't. 
We mm-hmm. kind of, we don't know where ours end and starts. So right there, we have an identity problem. Uh, speak for yourself. <laughs> now, are you guys together? Are you together each and every day? No, oh, no, no, no. She's married yeah, to married. Uh, Ken Wall, who, by the way, inspired me to write the book. Really? Yes, yes he did. I'm, I'm and a what's recovering the, alcoholic. He's mentioning. What's the longest you've gone without seeing each other? Uh, when I lived in Hawaii. That That's was right. about two years. Right. Oh, oh really? You but guys we were, were calling for that each long? other a lot. No, we don't miss seeing each other. I know how she looks. I look in the mirror. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, we do talk to each other quite a bit on the phone. You know what's really insulting is when people ask us if we're into each other. Please, we have higher standards than that. <laughs> <Did> <laughs> Been you? there, done that too. Deja vu. D- did. Yeah, we get the same question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Drew, you want to take some calls? Let's go right ahead. Here we go. This is Justin, 15. Yes, um... Whenever, you know, I, I started coming out to my friends and stuff because I'm gay. And and I've come out to a lot of my friends, and I'm in 10th grade, and last year is when I started telling people. Mm. And um, I told my mom about a week or two ago, and she was fine with it, too. She said she still loved me, and she won't love me any less. That's nice. And, but she says she doesn't want me to come out at school because, do you remember the Matthew Shepard thing that happened in, like, 1998, I think in, it was? In Wyoming? Mm. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yes, of course. And she but, doesn't but, want that. I, I think that's very interesting that mom sort of picked up the uh, banner for you and worried about what m- is worrying on your behalf for things that most of our callers usually worry about. But I think that's a fantasy on her part that somehow th- I, I really think that you need to decide for yourself what you want to do and not let her anxieties dissuade you. It sounds like you've handled this in a very mature way. You've been slowly telling people. You've been testing the water. People are okay. You're developing a support base. Then you tell your mom. She's good with it. I, I think you can c- go on and continue to represent yourself to the world as you are well, without yeah, being but, too fearful. But you're f- 15, he's in the ninth or 10th grade at high school level. Yeah, but they're accepting him. He's, he's had good results so far. Yeah, I know, but I mean, why you know, chance it? Well, how, how big are you, Justin? Well, um, what do you mean? <laughs> I think it's a viable question because... Yeah. Uh, because if, well, if, if he's 6'4", 250, you've got nothing to worry about. Well, I'm six. I'm like 5'11", 6 foot almost, and and I weigh about 140, and, you know, no. I'm not like I'm no. not like big. But that ain't going to work. No. No. But, Tell everyone you're straight. Buy at worst. <laughs> and now, J- Justin, look, I don't, I don't mean to uh, poke fun, but in high school, it's not a good idea to announce that you're uncircumcised. That you're anything. It's, yeah. it's not a good idea to announce anything. That you like decaf coffee. Right, because people are looking for an opening in, in which to make fun of you with, and they will find it. But and why hand, give I, them that? But I don't mean you have to cower in shame and in fear. Well, it's just I want to tell everybody that way I don't have to like act like I'm straight or whatever, you know? Yeah, I, mean, I, I understand. I, I and, have and, a lot of friends that, I mean, they help me out and stuff, and I mean, I'm not saying. I just want to know if there's any like security precautions I can take to make sure, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that I'm taking my mom's side about not coming out because I really want to because I'm I'm pretty sure I, I'm 100% gay because I've experienced these feelings forever and I try to push them away and they just keep coming back. No, Justin, it we're, we're, it's not about whether or not you're gay. It's about what is in the interest of prudence and safety. And I, I listen, it sounds like you've handled things just properly so far. You have a great group of supportive friends. Keep them around you. That's all. Right. Yeah, but what about maybe mom doesn't want her kid being gay and have to deal with the, you know, PTA and the open house and all that well, crap. You she, know what I'm saying? like she'd be okay with it. I just think she has a little fantasy that somehow every gay child, gay male gets beaten up. Can I add something? Mm-hmm. My mother's gay. She's a lesbian. And I think she handles it very well in the way that she doesn't announce it. Uh is more like it's understood so you get it mm. if you're supposed to get it mm. if not if you're ignorant yeah. to it you won't she doesn't push it on people whatsoever so the ignorant people that are i mean they'll pick up on um the ignorant people will pick on people that are feminine not necessarily gay so if it's understood he's going to uh be kind of drawn to the right people was she was she really struggling with her sexual identity when you guys were growing up not at all no she already knew she was gay oh, then. Oh, yeah. She, she just was, wanted kids. She lived with a... Yeah. She now, always... How, okay. Help me do, understand do you, that. Do you think that affected you guys in being so, you know, incredibly Female. straight? Female. Yeah. No, it's funny <laughs> because we're very... We're not. We're very kind of tomboyish and everything. Our image is more our mother. She's very feminine. She was, you know, a beauty contestant, 
just a, she was a model, the whole what thing. What people would call lipstick lesbian Absolutely, and all the very way. very feminine. And yet my sister and I were very, very tomboyish tomboy. and into sports and everything like that. She lived with a woman, and I think she felt very good about that. And she only told us when we were 18. I mean, we uh, but, appropriately. But, but you was, understood. Yeah. Was there a family at any point in your life? The only thing... With her? No. I, but dad was like just sperm donor. I mean, what was that? No, no, actually, they split when we were about three. She saw him and she said, "Oh, he'd make nice-looking kids." Yeah. And yeah. so she got married babies. with him, and then she just knew. She tells me that she feels that gay is not a choice; it is in yeah, you. Yeah, it's in her. Sure. Yes, and I believe that because she tried to make it work with my father, and she knew it was just mm. basically for kids. She wanted to be a mother, and mm. she wanted to have a family, but then she found herself that it wasn't being completely The dysfunctional honest. part is having to n I identify it. with this guy because mm. it's, yeah, you, you kind of get so that you're, you feel like you're lying if you're not being honest. Interesting. But I agree with you. It's none of anyone's business. He just wants to, you know, load it out like I did. Brandy, 15. Yep. Hey, Brandy, what's up? Um, well, I'm sleeping with a married man. At 15. How old is he? 29. Does he have any kids? Yeah, he has four. He's quite a gentleman. Sir yeah. Walter Raleigh, is that his name? Yeah, what a dynamite individual. I'd like to get to know him better. Now, in fact, let's get elect him to office or something. He really should be a leader <laughs> yeah. amongst men. Well, I called before when Psalm 41 was on, and I asked you guys what I should do, and you guys told me to leave him alone. Yeah. <laughs> well... We just kind of started having sex. Ladies, Alrighty. Let, let's let the Barbie twins uh, chime in here. Oh, didn't listen to them the first time, did you? <laughs> well, they, she listened to a bunch of guys is the point. Then maybe you guys can get through to her. You know, I have to say that if you're 15, this guy is a pervert. I mean, no two ways about it. He's I, just no, using I, you. I know. I understand that. But it's like, it's. You got it. You got to think about the honesty issue. He has a commitment with a woman, and you wouldn't want to be that other woman. You have to have some kind of oh, respect. Married. Yeah, with, married with four kids. You got to have some kind of respect for that other woman. Yeah. See, the more if, you get involved with this guy, he doesn't gonna, care about you. He's going to be doing this to other women too, because there's no commitment here, and from that, his side. That, oxytocin is going to be flowing in you you're going to invest yourself in him and he's going to just walk away find another yeah, 15 you, Brand, year old. yeah brandon you don't exist to him that's mm -mm. the reality you don't, you're just an object you're just a young toy yeah and i feel bad for you my well to, to be fair to brandy his wife probably doesn't exist to him either that's true no, no nor do his kids for that matter but the Thank fact you. is don't give her hope i'm more curious about <laughs> what it is that would make brandy find this an acceptable situation um, I don't know. It's like sometimes he makes me feel really special. Do you think that she maybe has an absent father kind of thing too, like you guys had to deal with? Is it? Uh, yes. Is that kind also, of wait. She probably I, true or false, Brandy. Do you feel that you want to live out the fantasy and you feel like you're living it out, getting it out of your system by being with him? Well, okay. I was thinking about it, and I think that I'm doing this because my dad wasn't there, and I'm kind of looking for a father figure, and in a way, he is. But it's like there's something else there. Yeah, there's something else there in that I, I would. He's giving you more attention than your dad did. Well, exactly. That yeah. and I think Brandy's got more going on than just an abandoning father. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. But yeah. that's... see, the bad thing is, is that you're starting to use your sexuality as a manipulation to get men into your life, and that's a really bad road to go down. That's what strippers and prostitutes do because they had father issues, and it's good to be right away to develop healthy relationships. And to go to therapy about your dad. I mean, your dad will be always how he is. He won't change. But you're not going to find it by manipulating your sexuality towards him. Yeah. All right. But uh, listen, you, you called once before. We told you to get away from this guy and you slept with him. So yeah. look, let's use a little reverse psychology. Marry this guy <laughs> and have his kids. Have many Promise kids. me you'll do that. <laughs> Don't call back unless until you're pregnant. With the third child. I am with his fifth. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, All baby. right. Well, uh, you know, you know, I, I don't blame, and especially if I look like the uh, Barbie twins growing up. Oh, my God. <laughs> and by the way, I'd like to buy one of your eggs. <laughs> Drew, what do you think? I, I, uh, there's a harvesting procedure I can go through this evening if you want. Start, start the stimulation. I'm going to harvest one tonight. They're on eBay. <laughs> Clear out the freezer. Throw Lycus's lean cuisines out in the hall. <laughs> 
We need room in that freezer for a Barbie twin egg. But as a woman, when you're a little bit screwy and your dad left you and you're spinning around emotionally and you have something that guys want, I, I, I know we can tell them not to do it, not to rely on it, not to fall back on that. But how can they really do that? What, do, what, do you know what I mean? What are yeah. the other ways that they can get out from under that You could drive? say you have other options. When you say don't, they're going to use it. But but it's such a drive for them to use arousal and to use their sexuality. Because it's so easy, though. And, and, but what, what can give them some sort of gratification in to life? To look at it as a challenge. Just to say that's too damn easy. Anyone can do that. You're above that. Use something else. There's other options. Go down those paths. Like a challenge. I always wanted to be an athlete when I was young, and I wasn't good at sports. But it was a challenge, so I went for it. Just hmm. like that. Interesting. All Adam? right, Drew, it looks like we got to take a break here, right? Yeah, absolutely. How, are you, are you, is your nose still stuffed up? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I'm feeling good. Yeah. All, All right. right. So I can get throw to, throw to break? Yeah, why don't you do that? All right, we're here with the Barbie twins. When we come back... Uh, we're going to talk to Don, who says that one of the twins said something that really impressed her when we yeah. get back. Back at Love Line, Adam is in Las Vegas, right? Yep. Yep. We're here with the Barbie Twins. They have a new book called "Dying to Be Healthy." All the proceeds from that book is going to what organization? Different various eating disorders. That there's a list in here. And I, I'm, I kid you not, this is a substantial book. <laughs> Seriously. And and uh, Drew, stop being condescending. No. I... And do you do you guys have enough? Do you guys have enough money that you can uh, just do give that... it away? I was just telling Drew, we felt so guilty of all our blood money from all this TNA. We decided to. We're, we made good money doing nothing. We're also and... doing a calendar signing tomorrow. That's, oh, that's what, right. what else we wanted to plug. And those proceeds will be going to the firemen and police. Um, Policemen right. in USO. Yeah. The September it's 11th. It's a tribute thing. to our veterans. Our yeah. father was our favorite vet, of course, mm. a Navy pilot. But mm. uh, we really want to, Veterans Day is coming up. We thought it was very appropriate to do a tribute calendar signing. Our poster is a, is a, um, a number one selling poster with the military right now because it has a flag. And uh, <laughs> that's why that's why the guys, that's why the guys go for it, Adam. There's a flag in the picture. Well, what, what, that's how, all I can figure out. Wait, well, what is on this calendar? The calendar is just us. Uh, it's funny. Posing. Yeah. <laughs> Posing. But we're bigger. Yeah. We're bigger. We're size and 10. You're bigger what? Uh, we're, he, in we the used to be like a size 2. Yeah. It was just insane. 2, please. We never been that. Okay. Well. Don't exaggerate. Maybe a 4. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we, we're bigger. What are you now, 4.5? So no. no. We're size 10 or yeah. 8. Yeah, we're, we're big still. But well, the thing now, is, small yeah. bone, but big. The thing how is, how big how how much how tall are you guys? You guys are tall, five, right? Yeah, five nine. And uh, D D cups? No, we're thirty four C. About yeah. we're we're you know we're not as big as people think we are. So when yeah. we say we are big, we're, we're, I'm saying that we look like a wrestler. Yes, we're muscular. We're bringing out the healthy look, hopefully, huh. and hopefully we're also motivation for women because basically we're saying if we can do it, you can do it. I mean. We became so fat efficient from all the starving we did, and we Yo -yo just dieting. took our knowledge and applied it towards our life, and uh, and I think uh, we look healthier and better now. I want to hear what Don's got to say. Don, okay. 22. Yeah, okay. Earlier, one of the Barbie twins said something about, you know, thinking in the future and, you know, living for the future, like, you know, one day I'm going to be this, and then I'm going to do this. You know what I'm saying? Or am I not Oh, I sure do. Okay. Yeah, the the thing uh, about living in the future, they, it's kind of dysfunctional thinking. I, I've, I've, through therapy, I've been taught to live in the now or not in your senses. A lot of you know drug addicts say, yeah, they don't have any future goals or anything like that. If you live a healthy life, you should live in the moment. Mm -hmm. That most of it, us daydream in the future or we live in the past. A big and secret, big key, gratitude. That's the difference. Yeah, keep... Uh, 
appreciate what you're doing and do two things of contributing and connecting in the world and that keeps you in the now but out of the body by by doing charity and something contributing mm-hmm. well my question is this i um you know there's well i guess i'll explain a little bit first i remember being 18 and looking in the mirror and saying okay i'm going to quit this destructive behavior and that and this and that and by the time i'm 21 i'm going to come out as this kind of person you know what i'm saying yeah and then um about three days ago i did it again by the time i'm 25 i'm gonna do it and i didn't link it with the time before and i never knew that anybody else felt that way until she'd said that and i was wondering you know how how do you really it's yeah i did that with the dieting in what two weeks i'll be thin and perfect Right now, I didn't want to be in my body. You, you just, it's, it's really, it's an unhealthy way of thinking. You have to do your best today and appreciate what you've done in the progress, not the perfection. You're going for the perfection. Something right. in the future, and the future doesn't exist. And I mean, who knows? We could all blow up tomorrow. Yeah. So you have to just we live in the all, now. Yeah, we could have been in the World yeah. Trade Center, you know? That, that's nice. Exactly. I'll, be on a, I'll be on a plane in about 16 hours, <laughs> ladies, so right. thank you. <laughs> Heading, heading back to L.A., and uh, let me just say this. I, uh, do you guys get out to Vegas much? We Ooh. did um, MTV Spring times. Break. Yeah. And, uh, and, Drew, you've been to Vegas many times. Do you, do you notice how ill people speak of Los Angeles, the folks who live in Vegas? It seems like every cab driver is a yeah. transplant <laughs> right. from L.A. Yes, yes. And they, always, they, they have no remorse. They're like, where are you in from? L.A. Oh, I'm oh yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I used to live out in L.A., but the corrosive smog, the riots, the crime, the high taxes, earthquakes, I got the hell out of there. And you're like, yeah, thanks, a-hole. I'm going home tomorrow. I'll be raising my kids there. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, do you want a tip now? North, normally I get those guys like up in Big Bear and, uh, you know, you, you'll uh, get, Northern you'll California. Get them, you'll get them in Vegas, yeah. too, Drew. Good times. All right. This is uh, Jason. He's 25. Hey, I can't believe I'm on. Um, I had a question. I guess it's kind of for Dr. Drew, but I'd like to hear what Adam has to say. But I just met a girl and just met her, so I'm not in love or anything. And she told me that she has herpes. And I guess I just kind of trying to get the best information I can to make a good decision. Which, Which herpes? She has gen um, genital herpes? Yeah, I think so. But. Okay. I should probably have to clarify that with her. Yeah, well, she can take a medication that will decrease the probability that a virus is being shed or that she'll have an outbreak. You can wear condoms and decrease the probability of contracting the disease. And if you limit your contact to a time in which she's not experiencing any symptoms and wear a condom, it's it's you know it's a reasonable no, risk. Yeah, if he wears a condom, yes. and she she could have a bloody ulcer. He could put a condom on. He'd be fine. Well, hey, well, when did? <laughs> but Jason, when did she drop this herpes bomb on you? Well, I just I met her uh, Thursday, and then Friday we went out, and uh, she stayed over at my house, and we're uh, like uh, you know just like in the bed and stuff. And, and what we were did, you guys doing? Well, um, I I like you know sucked on her nipples and stuff and fooling mm -hmm. around kind of stuff. Uh huh. And, sucked and, on and, nipples. And then when I tried Check. to kind of go Check. further than that, she stopped mm -hmm. me. And uh -huh. then we're just kind of cuddling. And maybe she just wanted to stop. Well, that could be. It could be an excuse to get you to stop. But on the other hand, I'm impressed <laughs> that she that she gave you the information up front. A lot of people know, sort of I let suspicious. let it rest. I know, I know. Hold on I'm a second. Yeah, nobody, she, nobody's that honest. <laughs> yeah. Right. Nobody. Nobody. That. No, hold on. Nobody says no. stop. I have her. You know, uses herpes. Why? That would they just say I crapped my pants. Don't go down there. <laughs> It's, it's less humiliating, please. Well, it wasn't no, just no, that. nobody uses herpes as an excuse. Oh, yeah. you, so you mean it must She's, be true? She's just yes, an honest it, person. It is, it, oh, it is I true. Have. Well, no, it is true. Well, look, you're you're a Barbie. <laughs> yeah. Well, she told me because I was kind of telling her I just try to avoid getting anyone pregnant or. Getting us. Well, I, I'm just. She sounds like a substantial person. Yeah, who's being she's very a keeper. With, yeah, and, and it's and it, it's genital herpes, by the way. I well, mean, that's that's why she stopped you, right? Right. right. That must be what she's talking about. But I, I think this is a nice for John. Move forward. What? I think you should forge yeah, on with that forward. relationship. Yeah. All right, Jimmy. Yeah. Thirteen, Jimmy. Yeah. Hi, Jimmy. What's up? Well, I was at school today. Yeah. These guys were talking like if you masturbate too much, that your penis won't grow right. Won't grow back? Won't grow right. Won't grow right. I'm going to put you on hold because that phone connection is awful. Adam, uh, you've been experimenting with this for years. <laughs> I, well, I was going to say it's untrue, but then I took a look down and thought, Ooh, yeah, the yeah. kid may have a point. Maybe that's the problem here. Would you like a calendar? Yeah. Well, look, you Barbie twins already screwed my penis up in the early 90s. 
that, that, that was the incident where you, it that, that was that incident, wasn't it? They had to sew yeah. it back on. No, I, I really mean it. I, I feverishly beat off to these two, and they're playing both, both pictorials. I'm sure. Both I'm, of them. I'm sure they're very I'm impressed with that information. Sorry, Adam. I can feel feverishly. I'm very I thought it was. Here. I thought it was Jenna Jameson that caused you to pull your penis off. <laughs> No? Well, she. Well, it had just she healed. Uh, it had just healed from the, the Barbie time. twin. I see. I see. And it, it, it scarred over, and it was. The doctor said it was coming along nicely, and then the uh, Jenna Jameson on DVD came out, oh, and then no, it went that again. Pow, pop. That's uh, right. Now is, I'm keeping it off. This is TC, who's also 13. <laughs> where, where, where do you keep it, Adam? Yeah, you think I'm going to tell you so okay, it'll wind up right. up your ass? How dare you, TC? Go ahead. I'll yeah. never see it again. Hey. Hey there. I got a joke for you. For Adam? I hope. For both of you. For both All of right, us. go ahead, TC. Okay. God brings Osama bin Laden and George Bush together. Yeah? He asked bin Laden, you get one wish, what is it? And he said, and bin Laden says, put a 100-foot wall around Afghanistan. And then God says, granted. And then he asks George Bush, and he says, what would you like? And so George Bush thinks for a minute, and then he says, fill Afghanistan full of water. Oh, yeah, that's good. Give, yeah, give that's him, uh, give him a few words of encouragement, Adam. You had the had the way. Well, let me let me let me give you let me give you a tip, TC. You're young. You didn't you didn't make fun of the Polacks, the Jews, the blacks. There was uh, there was almost no racial stuff in there at all. So he's got to okay, work on that, that. that. Yeah, that's the cornerstone to good comedy. So uh, you can work religions. You can so work shame, ethnicities. Humiliation, abuse. Those are the three right. key words in comedy. Little is that sex. right? Right, right. Oh, yeah. And but but it, it, it was clean. Okay. Mike but, is 20. But clean without funny is an empty victory. <laughs> I see. Well, I don't care about it. Mike? Hold on. hold on. Mike? Mike just told you to hold on, Drew. Yeah, Mike is, I'm <laughs> dropping him off here. Katie, 17. Katie? My oh, goodness. you're on a roll. Try this here. Katie? Can you hear me? There we are. Go ahead. Okay. My question is, isn't it possible to get pregnant if a guy finger, or jacks off and then fingers you? I With mean, the same hand? Yeah, but Katie, yeah. you 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 know you could make an, a, a dream up a scenario as easily as any of us can, whereby there's a possibility this stuff can happen, right? No, but, it actually did happen. No, I understand it actually did happen, but I, I see. The point is, no one could give you a number that predicts the probability that some sort of haphazard uh, encounter with semen, uh, the probability that would lead to a, a pregnancy, if you were concerned, you ought to take emergency contraception. It's something you can take within 72 hours of contact. That will prevent an egg from being released and prevent a pregnancy. He he did this to himself, and then he did you. Yeah. I, I tell you, I think this guy's a keeper, because <laughs> I, I always say I'm going to do stuff to women, and then I beat off, and then I call it a night. And you fall asleep and smoke. yeah, I fall right asleep. Yeah, I get myself pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's, I got all kinds of grandiose plans for the uh, for the woman, but then once I once I get off, that's it. So the fact that this guy kept going at you after he was done is uh, you know quite a testament no, to but his it was will. With, with his hand though, see, with with his hand and and Katie, you didn't get him to do that you know move where he wipes it under his armpit real fast or anything. <laughs> How long ago did this happen, Katie? How what what? How long ago did this happen? Um. Well, the first time I actually realized it happening was Saturday night. So mm -hmm. we're it's uh, more than three days out. So how about the last time? Wait, I'm sorry, what? You said that was the first time you realized it had happened. Yeah, see, we've been kind of like doing stuff since the middle of October. Mm -hmm. So Saturday night was the first time. When was the next time? No, see, that was the first time I actually noticed it. I think it happened before that. I see, the last time. This, this guy that. sounds like quite a gentleman, by the way. Let yeah. me, uh, Katie, I, I'm going to try to describe this guy to me. You, you, you tell me if I'm wrong, all right? Yeah. I'm picturing a guy, um, oh, monogram, blazer, ascot. Postgraduate uh, educated. Postgraduate education, of course. Well-traveled. Um, like a young, one of these a young guys, Thurston tassels, Howell. A young Thurston yeah, Howell. Tassels yeah. on his shoes. Uh, has a uh, pewter cigarette case that he uses. Always uh, opens the door first for the ladies. Am I right? A little OCD. <laughs> I hate to break it to you because you're usually always right, but you are so far off. Oh, he's are shocked. Are you kidding? Shocking. 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 Shocked. Shocked. <laughs> Shocked. Going the other way. Were you telling me this guy uh, has a mullet and drives a lowered pickup truck? No, really, he's a good guy. He's 18. He's in school with me. He's going to college. And he wears right. a mullet and drives a lower pickup truck. Okay. He he can't wipe his hand off before he you know goes in. 
see, I, he, he didn't, like, I don't know he realized it. See, what usually happens is he does this when, I'm, when I give him head. Oh, he finishes himself off. No, like, it, t- it takes him too long. So I let him do it, and then I just finish it for him. All right, you just be careful. I Look see, okay. So here. Be careful. This is Will, 29. Will? Hello. <laughs> I mean, what are you going to say? She, she take, get the morning after, put it in your medicine cabinet, use it if you feel you've been exposed, and be careful. Yeah, she's not pregnant. Will? Hi. Hi, Will. Um, I have a uh, weird question. My brother, he was into, like, veganism, mm. and then he went into raw, where they don't eat any food or and any food that's cooked. What, what? Hygienic. Just and raw nuts, he, fruits, and vegetables. Raw. We, we did that for years. We did years. that, too, huh? Okay. How that work? I liked started, it. All right. And, and then he will started, um, he started go, um, reading about breatharianism, where you don't eat any food whatsoever, and you're supposed to like live longer or something like that. Eat no but, food whatsoever. Yeah. There is such you, a like, thing. You're supposed there? to like stare at the sun for a little bit in the morning or something stupid like that. Oh my God. Did he read the twenty first survival of the twenty first century? Had to. I, I went to Hippocrates. And he I, read. He read a couple things. Um, he, I read the same a one. <laughs> website out of Australia that talks about it. He's definitely bulimic because we went that direction. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I, I took just, a fifty. Could, I took a fifty-minute flight from L.A. and was pissed off because I only ate twice <laughs> <laughs> on it. You know what it is? Is obsessive in the way that he wants to do better. And he's better. he's competing with himself. Yeah. First, he competed with what's the most outrageous, and uh, it's never enough. And so that he's he, at the point of not be eating. Like a yogi. But it's, I, wasn't, I wasn't thinking too much about it. Then we were out, uh, you live out off in your the middle of nowhere, sense. and uh, he was, you know, he had his back turned. Obviously, he was taking a piss. I went up to talk to him, and he turned around and he had a jar in his hand, and then he drank Drink from the it. piss. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. nice. And I wonder what kind of damage. I mean, because he he said he does research, and you're like you it, can drink it four times, and it's not toxic or something like that. Well, I, I mean, I they use it like a There's vaccine a lot of or homeopathic where it's supposed to uh, trigger your own immune system. I've heard good. It's, it's contradicting, but it's also radical. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. very radical. I call it crazy. Yeah. And Drew, jump in. And, and, and what about number two? What's he, no. what's he oh, do with that? Number one. Hey, don't, don't eat that? Just Put him one. away. If it's but you can two. tell how healthy you are by your number two. But you, like the, the twins have heard about this, though. Oh, yes. yes. Interesting. But, okay, so what, uh, I mean... He says, I like being a vegan, stuff. but that yeah, uh, I've met radical vegans that did get to the point that it's called autolization, like a potato put in water, how the potato grows roots through its own uh, cells. That's what yeah. you're doing. It's you're trying. You're almost fasting off your ketosis off your own yeah, body. Potato uses water though to create carbohydrate. Yes, the, well, I, mean, it, I know. It, it's a very good point. The, the, I mean, well, they see, try humans, to say sunshine in your own urine and oh, that's, just that's, very minimally. I mean, that a is bit of, such total. Isn't it? Mm-hmm. Some people are fruitarians where they just eat fruit, no yeah, chlorophyll. Yeah, even even as a vegetarian, I it's hard to advocate that because very few people know how to eat properly or the yeah. proper protein, and instead they turn to sugar, therefore making that cycle of hypoglycemic. Yeah, yeah I, I'd have to say probably the smartest doctor out there that really knows his stuff is Dr. Barry Sears with mm. The Zone. He got a Nobel Prize with the aspirin because he talks about acautionoids and he really, it's not a voodoo thing, but he really shows you that the bodies have never changed since the caveman days. And they're dictated by hormones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and mm-hmm. that we should be eat, grazing nuts, fruits, and vegetables and meat. Mm-hmm. We're hunters, that our bodies right. are made for that. Listen, and, tell, and tell your brother... Your- yeah, Look, he's, hold on he's, a he's got he's got some serious problems. Whether or not it's yeah, how come you didn't disorder? make fun of him and kick his ass right there on the spot? <laughs> this guy's a serious serious Cause Cause disorder. He's weak. He's weak. Yeah, he needs some he, food. He, he, he comes from the same family that his brother yeah. comes from. Oh yeah, yeah. You, do, you live off urine and pollen that you inhale when yeah. you run. Sunshine. No, listen. He he is either some major psychiatric disturbance. If it's a primary eating disorder, it's fine. It it's may just be that, but it may be a much more serious thought disturbance. Look, it, any any it, time you tr- any time you get too crazy about what you put in you, whether it's food or a penis, it's obsessive it, compulsive. It, it's Definitely. obsessive compulsive. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Everyone needs a nice balance and, and a, of penis and food. And <laughs> yes. and, and there, like in that. his case, the the urine, the BUN can develop. You can develop an encephalopathy. It can be very serious. You can actually become uremic from that. So, mm-hmm. all right. So all right. we're gonna take a break now. We're here at the Barbie Twins. The book is Dying to be Healthy. They are doing an autograph signing of their calendar tomorrow where? 
Tower Records on Sunset What's from the time? 7 to 9, 7, 7 o'clock. PM. Yes, and PM. it's a whole tribute for the veterans, so we're going to sing the national anthem. The proceeds go towards a relief fund. Fabulous. So it will be fun, like a party. Come, come, come. I'm Dr. Drew. I'm here in Los Angeles, and Adam is in Las Vegas. We'll be back. Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. 1-800-LOVE-191. We'll be right back. Hey, it's Love Line. Adam. Yep. What's going on? All right, Drew, doing a wonderful job there at the helm. Hey, I just thought I'd give you a chance to, you know. She and like Shane are both again. here. They is the uh, Barbie twins. I uh, passed their billboard on Sunset Boulevard many, many times as a young lad. Well, not so young, actually. Dying to be Healthy is the name of the book. They're doing a signing tomorrow at 7 where? A calendar signing Tower at Tower Records on Sunset, yeah. All righty. At 7 o'clock. And this is uh, Eric. He's 22. Eric. Hey, how you, how you guys doing? Good. What's hey. up? Um, my question is, well, I'd just like to say hi to everybody there. I love, love the show. Thanks. Um, my question is, um, I've got a friend who's um, in the process of going through being a transsexual, and um, he claims that um, the, the reason is that um, there's a part of his brain that identifies what sex he is, and there's another part of the brain that identifies what sex he's attracted to. Yes. Now, right now he's a male, and he's always been attracted to females, <clears throat> but um, he's always thought of himself as female. So I'd like to know from Dr. Drew. So, so he is a male-to-female transsexual yes. who is going to have lesbian relationships when he becomes a female. Exactly. And which, like is, which is what most of the male-to-female transsexuals do. Well, they're all male-to-female, too. What do you mean? Well, there's barely any female to male transsexuals. It's, it's, it's less common, but but what I, when I first I I encountered a number of these in psychiatric hospitals, and when I first started hearing that they were becoming female to have relationships with women, I like had to diagram it. It just completely <laughs> warped my brain. It's like wait wait a minute, what? You have to become yeah, a female to have a relationship with females. Because some women like, say women know women better than. Who knows a woman better well, than well, a woman? Well, listen, you tuck your penis between your legs and get busy with your tongue for Christ's sake. <laughs> That'll be my move on the twins, no, I think by the way. There's <laughs> two types of uh, transsexuals: gay and straight transsexuals. Mm. If you think about it, but, but, but there's but the not that ones, many. The, yeah, there's not that many men who are interested in becoming women so that they can have men. Oh yeah, there, there's yeah, some there are, yeah, yeah, yeah there's a, but there's a, a striking m- number that want to have, but not just women, lesbian women. They want to be with lesbians. Not as many as uh, transsexuals that w- they are obsessed with becoming a woman to be in a man's world. You'd be surprised how. how yeah, I know there are quite a few. Yeah, but it's it's. It, yeah, it, but you know the irony is you don't end up in a man's world. You end up in a freak's world because it doesn't work out. Well, you know, you know people it's, call it, us freaks, so. <laughs> yeah, but Just but being a twin. Look, these guys are. There's no uh, transsexual calendars. Believe you me. <laughs> And if there are, there's no no military guys whacking off to it. I'll tell you that right now. But wait a minute, we're getting not out. in this man's army. We're getting unfocused here. Oh, okay, that, go ahead. That <laughs> this guy is going to become a woman to have relationships with lesbians because lesbians will not have a man, right? Uh-huh. So the only way he gets to have a relationship with a lesbian is to be a woman himself. And there's something about lesbians that these guys find extremely compelling and attractive. But and how many? And, how many? Yeah. And they also have something about their own sexuality that they need to sort of cast off. But is that true about the brain? One, one identifying what sex? Yeah, that there? people do think of it that way. That that sexual orientation and sexual identity are two different things, and I think that's probably true. So this is scientifically okay. um, a factor. Well, it's an area that's a fluid area of study because it's not that well understood. But yeah, I think that's how people think of it. Okay. But th- this guy's definitely crazy. Don't kid yourself. <laughs> Oh. There's no, there's no biological mandate. He's nuts. Well, but it's all biological anyway, isn't it? Chris, the 16th. Yeah. Hey guys, how you doing? Good. So, Good. Um, really quick before I get to my question, um, I think Drew was saying that there was like no Civil War stuff in Atlanta. It's hard to find. Yeah, there's this place called the Cyclorama. I've been to the Cyclorama, and that, the last time I was in Atlanta, I was searching for something Civil War, and that was the only thing they could bring me yeah. to. It, it, and and I was the only person sitting in this huge, amazing museum. I was the only person in it. <laughs> 
I didn't know he went to Atlanta. Yeah. True, they don't have that many geeks in Atlanta, apparently. I guess I was the only one. I was just there yeah. again uh, yesterday, stayed at the Carter Center, and that dinner with Ros- Rosalind Carter was great. Wow. I don't know. That, the, the Carter Center sort of, and the, and the uh, Martin Luther King Memorial, to me, are what Atlanta's about. That's nice. Okay. So um, the question is? The question is, I guess this is more for, like, the twins. I guess they would know. Andrew, um, basically, I have problems with with um, my girlfriends. I have always argue with them, and I, I cannot have the same relationship. I just keep on arguing and making up stupid reasons to have fights, and then they usually break up with me, and the only ones I stay with are the ones that um, do the same back to me. All right, hold, hold on. We're, adding, we're actually out of time, so this is something we can start up with our next segment. Okay, right. so we'll take a little break. We'll yep. be back with uh, the Barbie twins and Drew and uh, our last caller after this. All right, guys, here's the deal. Line. You looking to hook up? Sick of wasting time with the wrong person? Line. One call is all you need to make. Call the Dateline. 877-889-DATE. Call the Dateline. Love line. I'm Dr. Drew. I'm here with the Barbie twins, Sia and Shane. Adam is in Las Vegas. What are you doing there in Las Vegas? Yeah, really. Uh, then... Actually, I'm I'm working. Oh yeah. Shocking. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you yeah. want to call what boo. I do, are you, work. Do, do you dancing or what is it you do there when you're in Vegas? He's working women. Yeah, I, I tried a little exotic dancing, but uh, the uh, thong back got tangled up in my ass hair, and it was uh, and they it was not pretty. In your face. Yeah, they, they, yeah, I will. I will be going to the Olympic Gardens after the show tonight. By the way, enjoy yourself. But listen, yeah. uh, we had a really interesting discussion without you here uh, about female female cross dressing. Something you and mm-hmm. I have talked about in the past, mm-hmm. and they were saying that they have actually dis- described themselves as that as women in drag. Women, in, right. yeah, that's the fastest words that I could come to my head because we're very tomboyish into sports, and my mom, who happens to be gay is very feminine and I just felt like it was it was lucky I had her as a mother because I could be me and not role play I didn't feel like I had to be feminine and all this to attract a man I didn't even feel like I had the need to have a man in my life I'm happily married because we have I think a healthy friendship marriage but when I dress up and I do this stuff sometimes I feel okay this is what the public wants but I feel like I'm I would say we're dressing in drag because we don't wear heels we don't wear makeup we play sports but, but it must do something for you though uh, what does it do for? It's like a Superman syndrome. It's kind of fun coming out and uh, Superman. It's it's in, no, no no. What it's I'm intoxicating. saying, it's very yes. intoxicating. It it kind of replaces, like I said before, it kind of validates that feeling. You know, if, if you're on the cover of two Playboy covers, then you. I couldn't people be so you. bad yeah, barfing you. in the bathrooms. You know, or, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> hey, do you do you think you think males who you know wear the cowboy boots and uh, you know sport the shirts with the sleeves cut off and drive around the raised That's jeeps are sort of type, so. <laughs> sorry? Uh, do you think they're male male impersonators? That's a good point. You know, I used to even say that sometimes guys that are guy guys. Um, are almost latent homosexuals because they prefer the company of other men and they only use women to make themselves feel masculine. Adam? There's a lot of men. Adam, uh, how dare you? Are you there listening? are a how lot of you? men out there that define themselves um, through their own sexuality, so they have to stay in that role playing. And it's funny because I watch some of these playmates and some of these sexy women, and it cracks me up that they are really that way all the time. And to me, so, it's so, like role playing. So, it's so like when Pam Anderson fun. goes home, she's still she's cross-dressing. always sexy. Yes, always cross. She can't let that go. So then we're so, not sexy. So it could be sort of. I think of a sort of a fetish. I mean, they have to be in it control could be a that way. 
or defining themselves. They they would be lost without feeling maybe sexy all the time. We were talking to Chris. Interesting. That's all there is to that. That's thing. all that yeah. there is. Where I with my husband, I'm lucky to have my husband. We can watch sports together, yeah. bet against each other, and just be go me. to the batting rage. Yes, you know, batting rage is ready. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm raging. Okay, <laughs> Drew, it, it's true. You do a you do a nerd nerd. Um, fetish, <laughs> don't you? Yeah, I'm nerd dressing as nerd. <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, Chris, you were saying about these dysfunctional relationships you love to get into. Right. Okay, yeah, I can't have any relationships, period, because if I have one with a normal girl, then she just doesn't want to put up with me. And Because I, you're trying always to evoke a fight? To... Right, yeah, kind of subconsciously. I don't, you know, try to do this, but it just happens. And then... I have this one girl um, who I keep going out with, and we break up. When we have a fight, we'll break up, and then we don't talk to each other for a couple of days. Get on the phone, you know, we start talking again, and start fighting again. You know, it's just you guys must fight. must come from the same kind of family, basically. Yeah. Well, how how old is Chris? Uh, Chris is sixteen. Oh, sixteen. He's already oh, listen. All, all all bets are off no, at this age. You know, another thing that I find with people that like to argue is so hard for them to communicate just to say thank you, I love you. Those feelings are yeah, so traumatic win. that in order to actually be nice to someone, they have to really be rude to them so that they come back But it's back also on. familiar. It's your family. It's the highs and the lows. So it's a way of staying away from intense feelings and avoiding intimacy and also the comfort of the patterns of the family from which you have come, right? Yeah. Chris, that's all. Okay. So listen, you're 16, you're way ahead of the game because you're questioning it already. Yeah. And you. just keep an eye on yourself and keep working on yourself. Because Alan? I mean, th this is something that if, if you're if you're over it at 25, it's a victory. Alan's 35. Alan? Hi. What's going on? I'm uh, just I'm kind of scared and confused. Um I'm I've got my wife and son, and when I was 13, I was molested by my mom's 18-year-old male cousin. Yeah. And I've really been battling with just being attracted to guys and just being obsessed by it. Mm. And I've gone through SA and, and counseling and everything. Good. It's, it just doesn't seem feel like it, they're able to get to the core of it. Do you, do you ever act on it? I, I do. I go on the Internet. But, I, but I, go to, just... I go to gay, so gay porn sites and... Uh, sometimes the chat rooms. But th it's in sort of a fantasy way. I mean, do you ever contact these guys? Do you ever have contact with guys? I've been to bookstores. Yeah, but what I mean is, is are you meeting guys or no. are you blowing guys? No. Do you okay. feel that you're homosexual? Because no. I, I know how to answer that. I have known people in your predicament, and unfortunately it does happen quite a bit. And what it is is that you're not necessarily homosexual, because I don't feel that homosexuality is a choice. I feel that you were trained to be seduced by something Stimulated. something taboo. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you feel that you can only be sexually aroused by something that is kind of kinky, dirty, not allowed, illegal, immoral. And so you're turning to this not because you're attracted to men, because it's not acceptable. Yes. But because it was, it first, it, it, it that's probably was your very first stimulation, was another man doing it. Okay. So it's Pavlovian. You yeah. know what the next step that you should do? Because I have found, I've heard, because I've been to SA as well, very good program, <gasps> by the way. But I have found that so that men don't go to the route of molesting again because you want to gain back your power. You've lost it out of that anger and that fear. You don't want to be dictated. By, therefore, you try to get your power back by trying to do it towards another child subconsciously. Mm -hmm. It's not even ma ma it's in your fantasies to get rid of that hatred and that anger and that vulnerability. The best thing that you could do is go to a therapist and act it out with them, a grown-up, so that you get the anger out, take back your power, because you can't do I it know, to I've another child. Just... calling him. Yeah. But it just doesn't seem like they were they've been able to help me with it. Well, maybe, maybe you haven't really dug in and really done the work. And Honestly, it, man. Yeah, and, and again, it's it's acting that out against a boundary, and then seeing what kind of feelings are evoked. If you're able to act it out in a way where you just continue to repeat the patterns of the past, mm -hmm. nothing changes. But when somebody sets a boundary and reflects back to you a little bit and does it properly. All of a sudden, some pretty heavy feelings start coming up, and that's that's therapy. Maybe it wasn't the right therapist. Maybe you didn't dig in far enough. 
but that's that is something that you can be treated for and you really need to be treated for before someone else is hurt I know I don't want to hurt my son or my wife yeah yeah well you know though I I think supportive of me I've acted out on it as far as going and and doing things at the bookstore well, with other guys and stuff. All right, but just stay with the stay with the program. And, may, and maybe maybe you're gay. Maybe this is something you've got to reconcile too. Maybe that's that's, you know, it's it's not about necessarily changing your sexual orientation. It is sorting through these feelings and history of trauma and the p- possibly post traumatic stress reaction you have, and if there's also sexual compulsivity dealing with that. And at the end of all that, there still may be a sexual orientation that's not heterosexual. We don't mm-hmm. know. Jesus, could you could you ever mention sex more and uh, have it be less erotic? You, you know, you said sex about 18 times in the last 40 seconds, and my penis went down a quarter inch each time, Drew. It's now in my ass. Vaporized. Yes, you could. But, you know, here, here's something I want to bring up, too, which is I, I think it's important for the uh, Allens of the world not to constantly beat themselves up. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he, he's got a wife. He's got a kid. He's trying to do right by them. Yeah. He's slipped up a little, but he's, it's been sort of a fantasy. He's not hurt anybody. And he's going through life like damaged goods. Like it's this constant battle, and his life is almost, you know, he sounds tormented. Yeah, he does sound and, tormented. And I think it's, it's, you know, Alan should know that everybody has their own crosses to bear and that we're all, you know, have struggles. And he shouldn't just feel like damaged goods and like, you know, he's an insane person. You he know, he should feel better than he does. Wait, uh, one thing, though. If you use pornography as something like an addiction, then that becomes destructive. But the go- going out to whatever he does to release himself or to experiment, that's fine. But if he's filling up something and it's not enough and he has to get more and more and more of it, then it becomes destructive. Julian is 25. Julian? Julian? Julian is asleep, maybe? Oh. There you are. Oh. What's up? Oh. Oh, he just woke up. Sorry to wake you up, Julian. Just, uh, you know. <laughs> just hang up on this jacket. You're late. You're late. All right, then go now. Okay, I have a question. I want to know what uh, I'm taking medication, Selexa, is. What is it supposed to be doing to me or what? It uh, raises the serotonin levels in your brain. It's a, it's a mild medication. It's very few side effects. It's for depression. Okay. You should have less panic, less anxiety, less mood disturbances, better sleep. Okay, because... Yeah, I think he's got the sleep part down. <laughs> <laughs> no, I drink. I, I drink along with this Oops. with this, with this this medication. Drink too. a lot of alcohol? Yeah. Well, it's possible that someone's giving you the wrong diagnosis. Maybe you're actually an alcoholic. And about 100% of alcoholics are depressed. But the treatment for the depression of alcoholism is treating the alcoholism, not the depression. Here is Daniel's 15. Oh, hi. Um, I have a question about, like, when it's acceptable to lose your virginity. Go ahead. What's the question? Fifteen years old? Yeah. Uh, do you want to lose it? Yeah. That, that's kind of what I was asking. Do you have a girlfriend? Um, No, I don't. But, like, one of my friends at school, she's been, like, asking me if I want to have sex with her. It, it kind of shocked me at first, but she's been going at it for, like, a few weeks now. Been asking just, you? Just bothering yeah. you for sex? What? Uh, just I, a- bothering you for sex? Yeah. And she's your girlfriend? No, she's a friend. A friend. Hmm. How old is she? She's the same age as I am. Fifteen. Jesus Christ. Where were these chicks when I was in high school? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, if this is something that was sort of appropriate and if you were really ready for, you probably would have already done. Your, your senses, your instincts are telling you this is sort of a dangerous situation and something not good for you to get into, both by virtue of the fact that perhaps you're not ready, and secondly, there's something up with this young lady, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think there is, but she, I don't know. Like, she goes to my church, and her parents seem normal, but I don't know. There's something about her that's just different. Your parents seem what? Her parents. Her parents seem normal. Normal. Like, I don't think they molested her or anything, or there's any reason. No, it doesn't have to be that, but it's just, you know, you just, you re- just follow your instincts on this one. Yeah, and, and there's there's guys, as we know from doing the show, there are guys who are 15 who are, like, uh, inmates in their 30s, and then there are guys who are 15 who are, like... Uh, Who's the kid who, who are like Harry Potter? <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Right. And he's a little on the younger side for 15. He hasn't blossomed yet. So you don't don't rush yourself. And I, I agree, this chick should freak you out just a little bit. And you're probably right if your spidey sense is tingling. Chuck is 13. Chuck? Yeah. What's up, Chuck? Up. Hey, um, 
I just got arrested a while ago, and my parents are, like, like kind of just, like, tightening up, and, like, I want to reassure them that I'm not, like, going to turn into a felon, like, like three other cousins I have. What were you arrested for? Reckless endangerment. What does that mean? Um, Ran yeah. over a kid in his big wheel. I, um, I pushed, like, five-foot snowballs into Tudor. It's a street in Anchorage. <laughs> five-foot snowballs into what? Into Tudor. That's the name of a street? Yeah. Oh, like okay. Well, sure. Street. It's also a style of house, you know. It's a, the famous so, family so in these, English. These big, these big uh, snowballs rolled out into the street and could have hurt somebody? Yeah. Have Did you, you make the snowballs? No, they were just pushed up by these graders that go down the street. Have you oh, had, okay. Have you had other behavior problems? Um, Like in school, yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe that's how you ought to convince your parents you're not going to become a, a felon. By maybe well, listen, getting hold on. Anything involving snow should not be a crime. No, but, he, but I understand that. You can't that. help. A 13-year-old boy's got to gotta throw snow at somebody. Even if it's five-foot-high snowball rolling down a hill at 30 miles an hour. Be that as it may, uh, he, he's a behavior problem at school. Of course people are going to be worried about it. If, the, if this kid were a perfectly well-behaved guy with straight A's, something like this happened, they'd let him go. Well, what, they, what's they up with the rest of your family that's a bunch of felons? Um, My cousin, she's like... She's, like, done everything wrong. She is. All right. She's just, like, living on the streets and off her friends and stuff. Yeah. And my or my mom's like, oh, man, I just, like, lost my breath there. But um, my mom's <laughs> like, you're going to end up like your, your um, cousin and live on the street, whatever, if you don't straighten up. I'm like, I'm not going to, like, be a felon. Right, but, Chuck, the idea here is not to convince your parents verbally. It's to earn their um, confidence. By getting your act together and flying straight. Yeah, and just get yeah. your grades up and play some sports and yeah. don't pull any shivs on anybody in the seventh grade and you'll be fine. It's, it's not what you say, it's what you do. And he's 22. But you, you, you got to know if you name your kid Chuck, he's he's got a much higher likelihood of becoming Chucky. a felon. Well, but yeah. it, it's particularly if you call him Chuck throughout his childhood. Yeah, yeah. Shouldn't he shouldn't yeah. he be called uh, what Charlie, uh, Charlie, or Charlie something yeah. when he's young? Well, and then Chuck, <laughs> Chuck, yeah, Chuck. Yeah. There, it's it's either it's, it's Chuck or two things. They're that they're that one doll that stabs everybody, and then there's that horribly unfunny. Uh, then there's Chuck Roden, who's on sixty minutes too, and he's even scarier than Chucky the doll, <laughs> or at least at least less funny. Annie, hello. Annie's twenty two. What's up, Annie? Um, I have a very low sex drive. Hmm. And it's really bothering me a lot. But um, I have a boyfriend. We've been together for a very long time. We've been together for about four years. Hmm. And um, it's starting to, I wouldn't say affect our relationship. It's not, he's not mad. It just, it's, it's, a, it's becoming an issue. Yeah. Is it, was it always this way in this relationship? Yeah. I, yeah. I've never really been, I've never really had a high sex drive. And you're on no he, medication. Um, I'm only on birth control. And, and have you been on birth control like, for years and years? Um, for about Three years, yeah. And before the birth control, the sex drive was still low. Yeah. All right. Adam, you were going to say yeah. something? Well, I was going to say, you know, when she was saying she had a low sex drive and she was 22, I thought, well, maybe she's single and it'll all work out. But then she said she was with somebody, and I realized there was a problem. But, you know, women... Women aren't with guys for the same reason guys are with women, you know? I mean, like, if you had a guy with a really low sex drive, he'd probably be single. Right. That's right. He, That's true. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. in a way, it's almost like a guy could feel used. Because hmm. you're in this relationship just for everything but sex, <laughs> and I'm not getting what I want, which is the only reason I'm here is for the sex. <laughs> I mean, I, I pretend like I'm not here for the sex so I can get sex, ironically, but... Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, so I, I feel I just I feel bad, and I, you know, it's like I said, it's I, I just feel really bad. How often are you having sex with him? Uh, not very much, like a couple of times a month. So every other week. Yeah. Okay. But I feel like I feel like I'm. I mean, I'm abnormal. That's what I feel like because I like I'm defective or something. Is it possible this relationship uh, isn't quite what you think it is? N I don't think so. No. Can I ask? Is your self-image pretty good? Um, it's how, how do you sense. feel just about yourself? I'm um, pretty good. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm pretty good. How do you feel being naked? <laughs> um, okay. 
All right. As I notice people who feel pretty good being naked seem to like sex a yeah. lot. <laughs> I wouldn't say I feel good being naked, but... Hmm. Hey, we want, are I we think... out of something there? Yeah, do you have him turn the, does he have to turn the lights off uh, when he has sex? No, not necessarily. All right, so it's not like you're uptight or you have a low low no, self image. I, I don't know. No, that's not. No, I don't think that's it. I I don't know and what it is. Have you just have you been this way all the time? Yes. So it's just kind of it's your just, cadence yeah, is a, a little rhythm. slow. Yeah, and that's the way some people are. Yeah, but, but it's can, making me feel can't really you just bad put out? Why don't Why don't you just hold still and let him hump you once a week? <laughs> <laughs> but that's not how I want it to be. Yeah, I know, but it's not it's not going to be how you want it to be. Well, the beautiful thing about being a woman is that you can fake it. That's true. Absolutely. You have I mean, multiple you... choices on fake orgasms. Yeah, yeah just go CRD. for it. I just, I, do, I would rather not. I was wondering if there's, I don't know, is there like something I can do? I don't know if there's. Well, yeah, you could train. Or something. Oh, I, I don't know like... about that, but you can train your mind to get off on pleasing your guy. Right. And then and it how... just happens. How how about let let me uh, let me draw an analogy here, and uh, I'd like the Barbie twins to weigh in on this one. Drew, we always talk about this that you know it, from as as a society we never want to tell a woman, oh, just get busy. Yeah, yeah. You know, okay, so you don't like it, sister? Get in there and please your man a little <laughs> bit. I mean, it sounds horrible. It sounds like we're we're talking about rape here. But there's so many things in life that you don't want to do, whether it's studying or working out. And people say, look, just turn off the TV and get busy. And when you do it, you feel better when you're done. And the more you do it, the easier it gets. And there's some repetition to it. And why is this so much different? You know, I mean, every time you go to the gym, you don't feel like going to the gym, but you motivate, you get up, you go, you feel better when you get home. Why can't she treat it this way a little bit? I agree with you, Adam, totally. I think that women and men are wired differently. But women, if they want to be with a man, have to understand that they think about sex 24 hours a day. And if they want to make that relationship work, they need to be a partner in that fantasy mm -hmm. and help them out there. And you can, you, you know, you can actually increase your serotonin by going, ah, I'm happy. So you can do that even with sex. You can actually visualize and start stimulating yourself any way it takes mm -hmm. to get in there. But I, and, you know, maybe he just needs to, you know, bang some of the rust off you. <laughs> <laughs> And it is kind of interesting, though, that that is part of a commitment, right? A commitment to sh helping them, the partner manage Absolutely. whatever. Well, Women love to be stroked and told they're beautiful. They're not. Well, as guys need to do that too, though. Guys need yeah. to make a commitment to really pay Maybe attention to that, that. also. Is, could there be something medically wrong with me? Uh, it doesn't sound like you menstruate normally. Yes. You have normal body hair distribution, normal yeah. height and stature. Yes. Normal weight. Yes. And you're on no medication other than the birth control pill and no medical problems. No. And it's been this way since you were 15. Yeah. yeah. You're just yeah, so, honest. Yeah, so it's, there are I'm, I'm, so many women out there that fake orgasms. <laughs> I, I want to talk to the Barbie twins for a second about faking the orgasms. A, B, C, or D. And That's the thing I, 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 find it, choice. I find interesting because you mix them up, right? I mean, you give different different fakes for different uh, yeah, absolutely. positions. Absolutely. The haunted house, the choo-choo train, <laughs> the squeaky door, the goat. No, quite oh, really? honestly, <laughs> if you <laughs> really Chuba get into yeah, right. <laughs> opera, um, as soon as you, if you really get into it, really, you could get off literally on seeing your. Yeah, man guys to like please. to think that it's them, but it's really the woman doing it in her head in conjunction with the man. You really have to participate yourself. You cannot sit there with a nail file. All right, so give me give yes, me a little sample of let's say oh, the uh, <laughs> choo choo train, Ch the, goat, the haunted yeah, chupacabra. house, chupacabra. <laughs> chupacabra. <laughs> That's that was which haunted one? house. <laughs> That's haunted house. Yes. Okay, good. Choo choo train. Next stop, the refrigerator. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. All right. See, uh, and that was the, oh, give me the goat. Do you have the goat? <laughs> that is so lame, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty lame. That is. See real. why it's we not don't sexy. Have... Well, it was a goat, with, though. I'll stick with the choo -choo <laughs> hey, let's train. put it this way: it's so unsexy, they believe it's real. Okay. Right. <laughs> oh, look, we we we, we want to believe on, when so. When it sounds really sexy, I'm going fake, fake.
<laughs> yeah, we, we really want to believe, and when you really want to believe, it, you're, we're, we're like those Mexican chicks who see Jesus in a tortilla. <laughs> I mean, we we want to believe so I badly. <laughs> He's All right. just there. We're here with the Barbie Twins. They're signing uh, calendars tomorrow night at the Tower on Sunset, 7 to 9 p.m. The book is Dying to be Healthy. I want to hear a little more about what how what kind of medical problems you guys got into with all that. But we'll hear about that after the break. Love line, love line. One eight hundred love one nine one. Back in a minute. Love line. The Barbie twins are our guests. Adam, he's in, in Las he's Vegas. He's in Las Vegas. And Adam, remember Omar the other night who called, who had the dad from Suckadickus? Yeah. Well, I got an email from Graham who tells me that uh, there is in fact a city in Mexico called Zacatecas. Zacatecas. Ah. Which, when uh, the mad stutterer pronounced it, it sounded like Suckadickus. But is there a uh, you bang us Uranus? No, Mexico? that was your. That was your. <laughs> Hometown oh, that, for his that mother. Was mine. Yes. Uh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, poor okay. Omar. I feel bad for that. Well, I think that was a real call. I really do. Drew, just apologize to Omar, and we'll move on. I'm sorry, Omar, for my, <laughs> right. my partner's behavior. C and Shane are uh, both here, better known as the Barbie Twins. Dying to be Healthy is the name of their book, and they're going to be at the uh, Tower Sunset tomorrow at 7, signing calendars and uh, pledging allegiance to the flag. That's Woo-hoo. right, for Veterans Day. Tower Records. And, and your dad, your dad was a uh, fighter pilot. Yes. What did he fly? He, f- I don't even know. Isn't that? That's what I love about chicks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everything you heard he, about he, them is correct. He asked that question because he's never met a woman who knew what the dad did in the military. Oh, he's lucky to know he's in the military. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> uh, but now, he, he was a he was a pilot during uh, Vietnam. Uh, n- no, actually, during the last part of the Korean War. Oh. Wow. So those are those. That's great. What were those planes? Uh, F-86s. F- yeah, wow. Is that right? With the Navigator? Oh, wow. I'm impressed. I don't know. Do they have well, they, they, there was a whole bunch of them, but the, the little the little <laughs> fighter <laughs> one was right. probably an F-86. Yeah. Be pretty. Now, I'm on, impressed. <laughs> on the back cover of your book, it says, Near-Death Experiences with Eating Disorder. Were you hospitalized? Were, yeah, my were you sister was. Fed? Actually, both of us. I um, Here goes our calendar sales. <laughs> I developed a fistula in the mouth um, from an infection. From vomiting? Well, a lot of people thought was that. Actually not. When your body becomes very acidic through ketosis, losing weight, and a lot of athletes are this way, your bones uh, are really bad because your alkalis are robbed to neutralize the acids. So my jawbone kind of gave away, and I had an infection at the same time in my tooth, and it met up. It went to the bone. Yes, I went to the bone. It was a very serious operation because I had a heart murmur from dieting, and I decided to heal myself naturally and fast, and they um, they said, you can't. It's like, you know, the more you wait, the worse it is. Yeah. So I, I have panic attacks in hospitals. I'm very, very scared of doctors. Did, and did, now, did they think you had heart valve infection also? No, they just said I It was I bone had a, infection. Yes. And just to clarify, I mean, bone, you'll lose bone with bulimia because your estrogen Absolutely. levels go mm-hmm. to zero. That's true, too. Your immune system doesn't function, so so a, a tooth infection that would otherwise be sort of contained can erode down into Absolutely. the bone. Absolutely. And then bone infections are really bad, it's need, very, need very IV scary. antibiotics. Yeah. So you I had, had to uh, get cr- cortisone shots in my legs, too, as but well. But the main thing was 10 with hours of exercise. With Ooh. her, she was in the hospital because she developed pernicious anemia, the fatal kind, where her body just... Shut down. Shut down. It would not do anything. She was like a dead person. Her her um, blood pressure was so low, it just didn't even exist. Mm. And that's what happens. Uh, bulimia, people think here in America, is just a mental disease, where in Europe they're finding out that uh, it it literally hits the body like AIDS. Mm-hmm. And it's... Um, it's a it's a horrible disease, and here we see it later on as symptom complex as like chronic fatigue and into other diseases, and they never first diagnose it with Feeding bulimia. Problem. Yeah. What did What did Karen Carpenter die of? Exactly? Yeah, that was anorexia. But the, 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 I did my research there. She really died of taking the laxatives, and I know a lot of people define bulimia as laxatives. When you're that thin and you take fifty 
um, whatever it was, Dolcolax or whatever, you are robbing the body of every electrolyte and you're going to have a cardiac arrest and your heart's going to be weak from dieting. And we felt in this land where everybody is doing crystal meth and hu even human growth hormone and all this, we thought, hey, we're just super healthy. We're only exercising 10 hours a day. We're super woman and we're excessively dieting in a healthy way and cleaning out our bodies. So we never saw it as a bad thing. Right. We thought we were just super Later healthy. we found out that laxatives have ephedrine in them, Some which them is do. like a speed. Yeah, we only but, took but laxatives the, the, towards this the This business of treating people who are exercise, you know, excessive Junkies. exercisers, well, that, that is one of the more difficult eating disorders to treat because Absolutely. of precisely what you're saying. The denial is supported by our culture, right. which is that... Hey, you're just e extra healthy. Right, you're just right. doing, you're just exercising more. What could be wrong with that? My right. trainer says it's good. Yes. My nutritionist says it's good. And it's all bad. It's yeah, all ends it up really being bad. You know when balance. it's bad, when it's destructive. Well, yeah. when it's taking over, you're supposed to get healthy to not think about the body and think about My dates high had to do my exercise with me. Yeah. I would not stop my exercise. They'd have to come and run with wow. me. Or in the middle balance, of the balance, balance. Fred is 23. Fred? Oh, Dr. Drew, thank you very much for taking this call. I'm filled with anxiety, and the situation is um, I've been calling AIDS hotlines all over the country. It's been like an AIDS hotline telethon for my house, and I'm getting conflicting information, so I knew I should come to you. Um, the situation is I met a girl, and it was kind of like a one-night thing, but there was no penetration involved, but only genital to genital to contact. And Is, I she, is she an AIDS patient? Um, I'm just suspicious right now just because... Um, I, I don't know who she is, but I assume is she an IV drug user? She just has a wild lifestyle. I can't really go into specifics because I don't know too much about her. What's wild about it? Um, well, first of all, she, I just met her, and she was willing to do whatever on that night, and mm -hmm. just by just by some of her behavior. If oh, every if, Fred, you're yeah. freaking out. If every woman that behaved like that had yeah. HIV. Uh -huh. We'd have half the population gone here. And yeah. I mean, that's well, ridiculous. Assuming if she was, though, was there a possibility? From non-penetration? Non-penetration. What? It was, it, was a brief, it was brief, but um, the thing is, she was menstruating the same day. Yeah. And, I mean, not, not at the moment that there was contact. She wasn't gushing forth blood, like, right then. Gushing? Yeah, but... Quite an image you paint. <laughs> what, was, yeah. what was the contact? I haven't quite clear on that yet. The, the contact was just, like... That's that's all it was was contact, like maybe brushing against each other. But your, how about your urethra? Did your urethra, did your the opening to your penis ex touch anything moist in her? I mean, I can't I can't recall. If so, it was very brief. All right, well, just Fred, you know, Fred, this would be we'd send you to the CDC if you got HIV from this, really. Yeah, I you mean, for them to study? Yeah, we'd have to study you to figure out why you contracted a difficult disease to contract after uh, no contact, basically. Fred, why, why are you so paranoid? Well, That's yeah, the question. It's funny that you mentioned the CDCs, because I was, I was doing pretty cool, and then uh, I called the CDC, and I talked to a couple of the people there, and they said, yeah, actually, there is a possibility, because you could exchange fluids. Oh, Fred, and please. Then, uh, Adam, ask him your question again. Uh, look, I, look, he's paranoid. Get Fred off the line. Fred, stop. You're a 26-year-old man. You're supposed to feel invincible. You're supposed <laughs> to be having a, anal sex with Haitian junkies at 26. Wear condoms. And, uh, know your partners. Be careful and just stop well, What is out. it? I don't trust guys who worry too much about themselves. And, and let, me, let me take this moment to say this about AIDS. See, this is what we've done. We've thoroughly freaked everybody out with all the left-wing homos saying anyone can get AIDS. It's everyone's disease. Everyone has a chance. It's a, it's, it doesn't discriminate against sexual proclivity or skin color or ethnicity. We, we do all this crap. We beat the crap out of everybody. And now everyone's paranoid. The, the people that have AIDS are junkies and um, who else? Drew the gays. These are the guys with the AIDS. In okay? This, in this it's, country. The, it's the needle in the, and the butt love. In, in this country. That's the AIDS. In, in this, this country, country. yes. Country. Yes. Can heterosexual people get it? Yes. Is it, is it rare? Yes. He doesn't have it from doing this. Lisa. And I think we do everyone a disservice by freaking everyone out with this. Lisa. Yeah. What's up? Um, I just got my tongue pierced, and it's like, it's pussing. Uh, AIDS. AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> no. Forget what I said. You got AIDS. <laughs> it, 
It's pussing. Yes. yes. And it's, it's really, really swollen. I mean, it's not like really, really, it's like a red. Did you did you go to a piercing place? Yeah. Did you talk to them about what to expect? Yeah. And is are you using those mouthwashes they gave you? Yeah. Are you using ice on it? Yeah. If you're concerned about it, call them back. They have a lot of experience with this stuff. I worry about these things. They can swell up like crazy, get infected, occlude your airways. It can be a huge mess. If there's any concern at all, go to an emergency room. But give the people that did this thing a chance to instruct you before you do anything like that, okay? Yeah, there's like one more question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When's like, the, do you know anything about these tongue rings and stuff? Yeah. Uh, when's the earliest I can have, I can give oral sex? Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if you about survive, a half hour ago. Yeah, if you survive the night, uh, yeah, talk to them at the piercing place. The, these epithelialize pretty quickly, but I would think it would be a couple of weeks. I'd still expect the, that. The uh, the Barbie twins aren't into all the weird piercings, are you guys? No, no, I yeah, I I, I think it can look sexy on certain pe uh, people, but no, I even took mm. them out of my ears. <laughs> really, See, I stay it, away it, from it, metal. It, it, you know, it, the thing that's really funny about life is that's not your vice. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we talk to people all day long who are pushing stuff through their skin and painting on themselves and putting beads in their penis, and that's their thing. Well, I don't, you guys, we don't even wear jewelry, though. We're right, kind of weird in that You way. got something else going, or you had something else going, and that was your thing. But it doesn't really, it doesn't bleed over into other things. <laughs> you don't get I everything. Like that. <laughs> yeah. You get bulimia or you get piercings. Exactly. Don, 20. Hi. Hey. How you doing? Good. All right, um... I just want to say I listen to you guys' shows a lot. And first of all, I love you, Adam. You're great. Um, Dr. Thanks. Drew, I think you do great stuff for us. Well, thanks, Helping Tom. everybody. It's just totally awesome. What can we do for you? All right. Um, well, I've known this girl for about five years, and we've been good friends. We talk a lot. For the most part, she's lived about three hours away, so it was more of a long-distance relationship thing. And, I mean, when we get together, um, together, stuff would happen. we make out and kiss and different kind of stuff just recently like within like last few weeks she's moved closer and we've gotten more intimate and we just remain friends and stuff and she's we're we've had sex and stuff like that but um i'm really wanting to get a relationship because now that she's closer i'm not worried about the long distance thing at all have you told her this i ha i have i've talked to her about it and, and she's, she's not she's not against having doing all the extracurricular activities, but she is not really interested in a relationship. But the thing is, I am, and I'm not sure if I want to do all this stuff without the relationship. Yeah, well, you're that, not, yeah, you're yeah. not, not going to let her uh, fool you into getting a BJ without well, but uh, it, wearing it, your it, ring. It sounds like he's, Genius. he's healthier than she is. He wants a yeah. real relationship. She doesn't want one, and that's, that's a deal breaker, basically. You well, can, you do, can, what, do you, what do you guys think? Uh, do you think his only shot is to kind of pull back a little bit and see if she comes uh, to him? I don't think she's coming to him. You don't think so? No, not but the way he would that, if, if he wanted her to, wouldn't that be his only angle? You guys have... Uh, to pull back? Yeah, to pull away. Yeah, I definitely, because there was a... Uh, it looks not very masculine when you start smothering. It looks... Because it, it's unusual. I mean, uh, we're used to men being yeah, Neanderthal no. and pulling our Girls hair. Girls don't like guys that are uh, attach themselves. They want to give birth to that. They don't want to have sex with that. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> that's interesting. Same place, just... though, ultimately. <laughs> yeah, it's true. One's going out and one's coming in, though. <laughs> but, you know, and then going out again. And then I'm done. Yeah. That's it. Once in, out, I'm done. And I count, I count the initial going in as once. <laughs> But but in, in general, wouldn't all of you agree that your only shot when you're in this kind of situation, and we talk to these people all night, every night, is you tell the person what you want, and then you just pull back. Right. And I That's actually, your only shot. Mm -hmm. And I, if, I, they come, think, if they come after you, fine. But if not, you are never going to get it. And I think Don is just healthier than this his friend, and he's got to recognize that, that he needs more from a relationship than she has to offer, and that's reality. If he wants to drag it along the way he's been going and it's not too painful to him, fine. Otherwise, he's got to get away. Yeah, you can't yeah, sometimes, force it. sometimes women fake like they just want the casual oh, sex because the they don't want to scare the guy away. Yes, all the time. So he might be pleasantly surprised. She yes, may indeed. want it to. Adam, we've got to go right. to break again. 
All righty. So we got the uh, Barbie twins here. I'm in uh, Vegas, and we'll be right back after this. Line. I'm Dr. Drew here with the Barbie Twins, Adam Corolla. In Las Vegas. Yes, sir. Yeah. Let's see if we can uh, burn up a few more calls before we call we, it. Hey, a we night, go through bro. a lot of calls when you're not sitting here, by the way. I mean, Thanks, Jackass. Well, but <laughs> also, I think you and I get along a little better when you're not sitting here, too. Maybe we had a. I don't know, this kind of works, doesn't it? Oh, we miss him. Yeah, we you do. To see you in person. I miss you guys too, but I'm gonna be I'm gonna be with you as soon as I get back to LA and I go through my closet. Uh, All right. So Jerry is 27. Jerry. Oh yes, uh, Dr. Drew. This yep. is probably more of a question for you. Um, I'm uh, taking a drug test tomorrow, mm-hmm. and um, I smoked uh, marijuana about ooh, less than a week ago, Saturday night exactly. And uh, I just found out yesterday that I have to take a drug test tomorrow for this job. And I wanted to know uh, what are my chances of passing, if there's any home remedies I can take. And that was your uh, first That was your first uh, exposure in a long time? Uh, it or, was the first. Uh, or was that the last I, time you, that was that when you stopped smoking pot every day? Um, no, I've done it maybe about uh, a handful of times in the last two or three months. How about what the last job, two? What job are you going for? I'm uh, going for a, uh, a AV tech position. AD? AV. 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 Audiovisual. Audio and does that mean when you say, how many times in the last two weeks have you smoked pot? The last two weeks? Yeah. Uh, twice. Twice. And both you, are you both will probably, a week apart. Yeah, you'll probably be fine. Don't uh, don't skip your breakfast. you got to eat. If you start losing weight, if you start mobilizing fat, you can mobilize pot. Stay well hydrated, but don't take any of these, uh, these yeah, adulterating. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard that they can they can show up as uh, you. That we are looking for that. If you yeah. have any evidence that you've been trying to adulterate your urine, that is a positive right. test. What, what if he drinks it like the Barbie twins? <laughs> drinks the urine? We never yeah. did. No. no, they just you stared guys at the said sun. earlier you drank your own urine. I heard you no, plain no, as day. No. This is Chris twenty twenty. Chris. Yeah. All right. Um, my girlfriend, she won't masturbate, and I don't think she's ever had a, an orgasm. So I want to know, what can I do? How old is she? 17. Uh, mm, mm. It, it's hard to Wait get till someone... Wait 30. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, give her some time. <laughs> let, her, let her grow that, into I it. I mean, that, this is the problem, quite frankly, too, when you're 20 and you're dating a 17-year-old. You, you know, at 20, you should be dating a 23-year-old. I mean, if you want to have some fun sexually. Uh-huh. Because you, you end up being this sort of this Fengali sexually. You know what I mean? You have to teach them everything and, and hope they catch on and hope they've been doing their masturbatorial studies and <laughs> not cheating Quid or writing the, writing the answers on their wrist or anything. She, If she's not into it at this age, uh, she just may be a few years off. I, I don't know if you're going to be able to talk her into it. Well, I don't I don't know if I want to talk her into it. I just, you know, is, isn't there like some some technique or something that might help? Ladies? Well, no. The I, no. Nice. I always say it's not the guy, it's the woman. The woman it sexually stimulates herself in the brain. She gets excited being with you. So it's not you. Don't take it personal. It's about her. She's just not, she's too young. At that age, girls want to be told they're pretty. They're not into their senses yet. Some are. All right. Some so are, yeah. it, Some are. what's his only angle? Just sort of kiss a lot of ass and I make her feel good? I like what you said. Well... Yeah, I mean, if you want a sweet little cuddly relationship, fine. But I go with what you say, a 23-year-old for him. This is uh, Tim, 30. Hello? Tim? Is this Dr. Drew? Yeah, what's going on? Oh, hey, um, my, maybe someone's playing prank on me, but they wanted me to call your show. About, about, what, they about what? Did Drew call you, call asking about something? What happened? You know, I'm the guy who uh, walks around has a... Has a broadcast system. It's under surveillance all the time. And what? Tim the crazy person? Uh, I guess. 
Oh, okay, Drew. Let's let's make this easy. What does it say on the screen? Does Adam want to talk to this guy? It says he's John Rocker. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Who's John Rocker? John Rocker is the controversial Baseball pitcher who was uh, with player. the Atlanta Braves, who That's made all those racial slurs stuff. about uh, New York. Drew, please. He's so handsome. How is it you know nothing about anything? <laughs> I only know him because he's time. handsome. John, 32. Really? You into him? Oh, yeah. He's so handsome. I'm not, I think he's, uh, you know, not very bright with what he says, but he's at least he says what he feels. Right. All right. Bigots can be attractive, too, <laughs> I think the point is. John. Yes. What's going on? Um, there's this girl that I've been in love with for, gosh, almost a couple of years now. And she's a really good friend of mine, but she doesn't feel the same. So how do I get over her? Not be around her so much. <laughs> yeah, you just, you just got to back off and whack off. Here's what, you're, you're, here's, here's what you're asking. How do I get her? Which is not yeah. what's going to happen. Oh, very good. Right. Yeah, and so, so when we say, hey, stay away from her, get over it, you're like, oh, you're disappointed. How, that's supposed to help me. No, you've got to deal in reality. The reality is this is not going to be a relationship, and why continue to punish yourself? Once you've had a few months to mourn the loss of this fantasy, then you can have a friendship again. But in the meantime, no way. Yeah, don't even ask about this anymore. Yeah. There's <laughs> one, th one chance in 100 you're going to get her, and no. that's if you back off. He is not going to One in 100, and that's backing off. So that's your only recourse. It's, it's zero in 100 by any other route. Would you shut up, Drew? It's one in a hundred if he does what we tell him to do. Is and that it, so bad? And, it, and it's zero if he does anything else. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Drew. <laughs> Drew's right. Sorry, baby. Uh, okay. Let's uh, take a break. What do you say? Yeah, it's good. You, you're off to the uh, Valentine Gardens or wherever you go. No, no. Olympic, I'm going to come back Olympic and say Olympic bye. Gardens. That's right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Who's John Rocker? Do you see what I have to deal with? <laughs> Relax. Okay, so I know there's nothing wrong with me. So what's up? It's not as like you and I used to think that these datelines were totally cheesy. Why can't I meet anybody? But I tried everything else and thought, what the hell? So I called the dateline and actually met a cool guy. I called the dateline and I hooked up with some cool people. Believe it or not, other normal people are out there looking too. 877-889-DATE. Love 1-800-LOVE-191. We'll be right back. Hey, Adam. Hey, Drew. I'll uh, wrap up the show. Thanks. Oh, okay. Adam. You go ahead and do that. Uh, that's the least I can do. I want the barbecue ones are just making fun of me for uh, being a nerd. <laughs> okay. No, I don't Just the opposite. Go ahead, Adam. No. Sorry. All right. C and Shane, the Barbie twins, for uh, coming in here tonight or coming over there tonight. <laughs> Dying to be healthy is the name of the book, and they're going to be uh, signing a calendar at Tower Sunset tomorrow at Tower seven o'clock. Right. It's all for a good cause. So uh, get down there and see the girls in the flesh. I want to thank you guys for coming in, oh, and I you. promise I will I be know. there next thank time you. you come in. All right. Absolutely. I want to thank uh, Ann for doing a great job lining up the guests and producing the show all week long. Engineer Anderson for uh, working his magic fingers. Tara, don't call me Tara, for doing a, a mediocre job on the phones all week. And, of course, uh, Damien and uh, Lauren. I'm not sure what they do, but I see them around there myself. So, until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Dingle. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.